My name is Carl Weiderquist. I'm from Cassopolis, Michigan. And I support basic income because it's wrong to come between anybody and the resources they need to survive. It's wrong to put conditions on access to the resources people need to survive. And that is exactly what we do. The problem is not that we refuse to help people who just happen to be without access to resources. We've taken the resources that people have used for hundreds of thousands of years to sustain themselves. We've called them private property or public property, same problem. And we gave control of them to the most privileged people in our society. And we say to everyone else, you get no access to these resources until you provide some service to the people who control them. You don't get to live unless you do what you're told. When you take control over resources someone else needs, you gain control not just over the resources, but over people. And the people who established the private property system knew exactly what they were doing. The people who killed the buffalo on the Great Plains knew it would give them control over the Indians. The people who enclosed the commons in Europe ex explained over and over again in their arguments for enclosure how access to the commons gave peasants independence and that independence made them lazy. They needed to become in dependent laborers to learn industrious lessons. And here it is, hundreds of years later, they're still trying to teach us that lesson. They want to say, oh, basic income is something for nothing. And that, that gets it exactly backwards. If you use or control more resources than someone else, you should provide them a service. That's how you pay them back. Um, the, that's why redistribution has to be unconditional and an otherwise unequal society. It's, it's the only way that the people who have more can justify it by doing something for those who have less. So I envision a society of basic income system where you pay for the resources you use and you get paid for the resources that everybody else uses. If you receive more than you pay, that means you're using less than everybody else did. You are right, you should, you should be consuming some services because of that. The system we have now is the system that's something for nothing. The people who control the earth, the people who most pollute the earth, the people who use up the resources of the earth at the fastest rate are paying nothing to the rest of us for that privilege. They paid the previous owners, but they didn't pay the people who have no property. Instead, the people who own stuff demand that the vast majority of the rest of us pr prove our worth to them before we get the right to keep living by accessing resources. And this rule makes us profoundly unfree, because freedom is independence. Freedom is the power to say no. We think we're free because we have the power to say no to one employer, and that beats the hell out of being a chattel slave. But a choice of masters is not freedom. Freedom is the absence of all masters. You're not fully free until you have the power to say no to anyone who would want to give you order. orders. And the freed slaves knew this at the end of the Civil War, and that's why they demanded 40 acres and a rule and a mule. And that, that, that's, their masters knew it, too. That's why they didn't get the 40 acres and a mule. Uh, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with jobs. Now, people can be, when I say this, people often think, oh, well, you're against, you think jobs are unfreedom. There's nothing wrong. Jobs are great. If you want to provide a service for somebody else, they want you to do it for them, that's great. But what the problem is only, if, if you do it because you want them, that's fine. If you do it because you get a profit, positive reward for taking a job, that's fine. But if you ha do it because someone has forced you into the position where you have no other reasonable choice, that's not okay. It's not okay to take a job because you've been put under threat. And a threat is exactly what our society is based on. Our society uses poverty, economic destitution, and homelessness as a threat to get the poor, the weak, the vulnerable to provide services to, to the wealthy and the privileged at whatever wages the wealthy and privileged are willing to pay. People who oppose unconditional programs like basic income want poverty to exist. Because you, you can't have real conditions. You can't have a conditional welfare system if you don't have real punishment for the people who fail to live up to those conditions. Conditional, conditional programs need a certain amount of poverty and homelessness to exist to provide the punishment to spur the rest of us to keep needing whatever conditions they set. We do not need, and we should not ma maintain, this threat-based economy. The system isn't going to just fall apart 
because we stop holding the threat of homelessness over the heads of the workers of the world. And that's just cruel. Of course, not only cruel, it's also self-serving. Everyone has their price. We all, all we have to do is pay good wages, and people will work. If you want somebody to work for you, you ought to pay them enough so they want to work for you instead of grabbing all the resources so they have to do what you tell them. A common argument is that people won't work if they get free money. But what they really mean is, when they say that argument, is that people won't work for such low wages in such poor working conditions if you give them free money, and they shouldn't. We maintain a threat-based economy to get the bad done, jobs done on the cheap. And we ought to be ashamed of ourselves for doing that. But yet, for most of us, this self-serving policy is ultimately self-defeating. We've so convinced ourselves that it's right and just and good for the privilege to uh, people of the world to threaten the less privileged with economic destitution if they don't do what we're told, that we barely notice the way we put just about everybody, way, way up into the middle class, into the position where we all have to do what the wealthy tell us to do. We need, we work indirectly or directly for people who own property. The, more, the less property somebody has, the less they can pay you to do something. The extent to which they're working for the people who own the most properties, the extent to which they can buy whatever it is you're selling. We forget that a basic income is for everybody who has no other choice but to take a job. And that's just about everybody. Just about everybody's in that position. The worst thing you can do for a worker is to put them in a position where they have no other choice but to take a job. It's part of the reason we have a Me, me Too problem, because women can't leave their job. It's part of the reason we have bad wives, because women can't leave their husbands. It's part of the reason most of the working class hasn't gotten a raise in the last 50 years. And that's why it's also, it's not just self-serving, but it's self-defeating at the same time. Because we don't take a realistic look at incentives. The incentive problem in this, common, in this economy today is that employers don't have an incentive to pay good wages. Employers don't have an incentive to share the benefits of economic growth with their workers. They've had less and less of incentive to do so since we began dismantling the welfare state 50 years ago. According to the St. Louis Federal Reserve, per capita real GDP has doubled in the last 41 years, since 1978. That means we can all work half as much and consume the same as we did in 1978. Or we could all be working the same and consuming twice as much. But instead, the average worker is barely any better off than they were 41 years ago. Virtually all the benefits of the last 41 years of economic growth, the last 41 years of automation, have gone to the top 1%. It's an email for the rest of us in real estate and things like that, paying more for our housing. Nobody wants to talk about this when they talk about when we, they talk about incentives. They want to talk about lazy workers. Now, why do people always want to talk about lazy workers and they never want to talk about cheap employers? It's a two-way street. If people want to, don't want to take a job on offer, that's always dispute about wages and working conditions. But yet we frame that dispute in a way that only the weak and the vulnerable are, are even eligible for moral judgment. We condemn them by, by not thinking about cheap employers as the other side of that coin. We leave the privileged people, the, one who the ones who control the world's resources, the ones offering the wages that no one wants, we leave them beyond reproach as if they were not even a party to the dispute. This is why we have owed each other a basic income since we enclosed the commons, since we abducted the slaves, and since we killed the buffalo. It's time to fight and win it, and that's why I'm marching for basic income on October 26th, and I hope you will join me. Thank you.